Welcome to the Atomo series on ProRes RAW. Throughout these videos, we will give you a variety of perspectives on how to work with ProRes RAW. I'll start with a brief history, and then adventure filmmaker Levi Allen takes us on a remote location shoot in British Columbia. Then we will go on a virtual set with Noah Kadner and cinematographer and director L. Schneider, where you will see ProRes RAW in action capturing pickups for L's short film. And finally, Ripple training Steve Martin will take us on his ProRes RAW post-production journey. So it's a jam-packed collection of videos with tips and tricks to make your next ProRes RAW project even more successful. So let's get started. ProRes was developed by Apple in 2007 as a family of codecs, including both high-quality and proxy versions. At the time, the industry needed a high-performance, high-quality codec that was flexible enough to serve as both an acquisition and delivery format. At that time, all the other camera acquisition formats recorded via file, or on standard videotape. Most of these codecs were either too computationally intensive or produced low quality images. They also made post-production workflows cumbersome. HDV and other legacy codecs used a compression scheme called Long GOP, MPEG-2 group of pictures. And the group of pictures codec structure meant that while the camera manufacturers could pack more into every file and keep those files small, performance suffered in post-production. Another problem within the industry was that broadcasters, film studios, and production companies all had different file delivery specifications. Some even delivered on videotape. I know, right? Videotape. I mean, I'm even old enough to know what this is. ProRes became known as an intermediate codec, since it consolidated all the different codecs into one single codec. It was one codec to rule them all. And this was for a good reason, because ProRes had so many benefits. It is a high quality, flexible codec that preserves all the original detail in the original camera file. Additionally, due to the ProRes iframe structure, it created an exceptionally high performance post-production experience. You see, iframes contain an entire image. They are coded without reference to any other frame, whereas a GOP file records one iframe and then contains multiple frame references to that frame. While convenient for camera manufacturers, GOP files created more computational overhead and took more computer cycles each time you pressed play. It's easy to understand why Apple ProRes was so quickly adopted by the industry as it became indispensable in professional video workflows. The team at Atomos recognized the significance of ProRes and worked to develop new products like the Ninja and Shogun to catapult ProRes adoption, and it really did. Atomos products democratized the industry, bringing ProRes to non-traditional video cameras like DSLRs. This opened more possibilities for creators to capture content with more affordably priced cameras capable of recording high quality, pristine ProRes using Atomos gear. Recording onto small, fast hard drives and coupled with the Atomos high quality monitors, the workflow became a creator's dream combination. As the technology for camera sensors advanced, more people wanted to shoot with all the image data they could get. That meant moving to RAW, and ProRes RAW was developed to provide yet another option for creators. Recording RAW means that you're recording directly from the sensor with pristine RGB pixel information and full 16-bit color accuracy, no processing. And that means you have more control of the image in post-production. When you record RAW camera data as ProRes RAW, you're preserving the original RGB pixel data and then debayering the data in real time every time you hit play. That used to take so much computing power that it was not very much fun. But because of the way ProRes is designed, with ProRes RAW, you get great ProRes performance with the flexibility of RAW. So what can you actually do with all that extra RAW data? A lot, as it turns out. What are some of the things that you would love to be able to fix in post from your last shoot? Maybe you were moving a little too fast between camera setups, or the light changed while you were shooting and you didn't accommodate for that. Generally, the two main things you can control in post-production are ISO, or exposure, with some fine-tuning for exposure offset, and color temperature. Perhaps you didn't stop and white balance again when you move between different lighting setups and daylight. Or maybe, during the best take, the light shifted from sunny to overcast. You can really push the color grading to the limits with ProRes RAW and recover detail in the highlights and the shadows. Some cameras, like the Z-Cam, have a higher dynamic range sensor, allowing you to get up to 16 stops of exposure, an amazing accomplishment for an inexpensive camera. Apple ProRes files are smaller and easier to manage than ProRes 4x4. This means shooting with ProRes RAW, you can also fit more files onto portable SSD drives or edit on a MacBook Pro with stacks of effects and multiple streams of video in real time. 
Many cameras can record more metadata in the raw video file, like shutter speed, shutter angle, and even lens information like aperture or focal length. And that information can become very useful for searching for clips, while editing, or with media management apps. And finally, capturing RAW, you can record the full capabilities of the camera sensor up to a 5.9K frame size using existing Atomos recorders and up to 8K from the Ninja 5 Plus. Even if you deliver lower frame rates in 2K or 1080, capturing a larger frame size means you can crop and reframe your images to give you more options in post. Many productions today are requiring a high dynamic range finished delivery, in addition to a standard dynamic range version. You can find more information on supported devices on the Atomos website. And because ProRes has become so popular, you'll see updates and new cameras added to this fast-growing ProRes RAW ecosystem. Many popular editing and color grading systems can work with ProRes RAW too, as you can see here. As you go through the next videos in the series, you'll see ProRes RAW in real workflows and witness all the benefits of using RAW and see all the ways that ProRes RAW will give you better looking images and more control in post-production.